Hey, good morning. It is cold and rainy outside, but it's nice and warm in here and always lots to do. I want to uh, point out a few things about oiling on these antique machines that I've run into, and maybe particularly on this Axelson. Uh, they only made uh, less than 6,000 total production of the Axelson um, machines and uh, in comparison to Monarch I think they were close to 60,000 so they made one tenth as many so we'll focus on this machine because there's not very many uh, of them and uh, those that have them may find this interesting and it could be applicable to uh, other machines. I'll have a look at the brown truck mill too. Okay let's get started on that I hope you're all doing good. Let me get this thing off this tripod and it can be tricky. <laughs> okay, so I pointed out before this, this machine's got these ball oilers and uh, there's, there's four of them right here. There's another one here for the tail stock and uh, there's two here, two there one here for the threading dial there is about 35 of those and uh, we'll get over to the headstock here see more of those ball oilers you got to locate them dig them out and uh, make sure they work and use them <laughs> okay now this older machine uh, the later ones had a window up here. The Brown and Sharp mill over there does too. And when the when the oil pump, not all machines have oil pumps, but uh, this one does. And it also uses splash within that within that headstock. So when the machine's running, you you can see uh, oil dripping or a stream of uh, oil in the upper window that is not here. But this uh, older machine has only, <clears throat> excuse me, one window. So how do you know if the oil pump is working? Okay, we'll get down here and look at it and I'll show you. It's pretty cool. Okay, so hope, hopefully you can see that okay. It's not glare or anything. I didn't clean out this window. I, this is uh, a rebuildable window and it hasn't leaked it doesn't leak so i haven't messed with it but right here's where the where the oil level is you know when it's just sitting and you can't overfill the machine because uh, you look over here at the center lever and uh, see right here oil <laughs> will leak out so if you overfill it, it'll, it'll drip out here until it reaches uh, that level. So I'm going to turn on the machine and let's see what happens. Axelson has seven headstock 
uh, shafts and it, it has uh, a couple extra because it has uh, gear reversing like an old Chevrolet pickup and uh, a little bit like that so um, to get oil back here you can run the machine in reverse and I'll show you what happens uh, when we do that we're getting in gear hold on sometimes it takes both hands okay you see where the oil window is there I'll put it in reverse Now, I found uh, the same with the Monarch 10 AA. It's good to watch the oiling on things. Now, this machine over here, if you run it in reverse, it picks up more oil to the trough at the top to oil the spindle bearings. So, when I, when I uh, want to run this machine, and I just got this running again I just turned it on it's been sitting here for over two months and uh, so if a machine sits for a considerable amount of time the oil drains out of it so when I started this uh, uh, 10 double E I ran it at 200 rpms for a while in reverse allowing the uh, oil system to pick up more oil because uh, it happens to pick up a little bit more oil in reverse. So I warm up the machine that way. Okay, back over here on this old way, there's another thing I noticed. Oh, and I should point out that these uh, World War II era machines have a Kuno oil filter and that is this deal here and they actually put these on Jeeps on the old World War II Jeeps and you turn this and it sheds little chunks of gears <laughs> or whatever it picks up so it says on it turn this frequently so I turned it and I usually leave it like that or like that and go, oh, I haven't turned it for a while. So be sure to turn your Kuno, okay? Now, another thing I noticed about these machines too, like uh, this here, it, it's, uh, see the, the oil had come back to the mark, all right? But the apron, now this is interesting too, Instead of going to the center of the window, you probably can't see it because it's filled all the way up to the top. And that's uh, gauged by the Gitz filler here, right? And you can see I got oil all the way to the top. 
Now, I took this apron apart. I had to fix the cross slide uh, clutch. And uh, that is a weakness on these very early machines that they quickly corrected. But uh, the nature of these machines is uh, they were made with older machines generally. So it's easy for me to, uh, with the 10 double E, I made some spacers and some other things. Um, the cross, the cross feed was uh, someone repaired it, but the replacement parts they got were uh, for for a newer machine, and maybe they just I don't know. But with a little looking at it, you can make it work by making some different spacers and stuff. So it, it's all very straightforward. Okay, back to the oiling on this, and this might be kind of interesting. There are no gits, uh, or not gits, but uh, beecher valves, those little troublesome things that metering valves that uh, um, meter the oil uh, that's real common on the Monarch, and uh, bridge ports and other things, I think, too. So. There's just oil passages. And the way the oil pump works on this thing, it's a, um, it's, they're not adjustable on the Monarchs, but it's adjustable on this. It's got a piston pump. I'll see if I can't put that picture uh, at the end of this. I have this out. But it's operated by a cam off the clutch wheel or the main wheel that comes off of um, the worm from the feed rod and it's quite large and if you don't have the oil all the way the, to the top that that gear is going to pick up a lot less oil and uh, it's very noticeable on the action of everything that it's not oiling all the gears properly. So on an axle sign, if it's, you don't want to say, hey, it's good, there's still oil in there. You want to look here and say, it's good because it's all the way to the top, which brings it all the way to the top of the window. And uh, I keep it that way. So the, the oil over 80 years, the uh, oil system got plugged up on this thing. So I had to <clears throat> block up the uh, carriage top. And um, it's got these passages here. And I was able to clean them out <clears throat> with a 17 caliber rifle uh, brush and rod. It fit in there perfectly. And it took a while, <laughs> it took a long time. And uh, so that's important. But I want to, I'll put a, a, a note in. I was looking at uh, some of the Axelson manuals, and they made that easier by having a removable manifold underneath the bridge that would make it easier to clean that out. But this one doesn't have that. It doesn't have a lot of a lot of little uh, conveniences that they added uh, next year or two, or two on the machine. So it, okay, so it's uh, really important to keep this full of oil. Now, on the larger axles, they had it so the oil pump. It's uh, because it's on this arm. It, it can be adjustable with a screw by limiting the arm return. So uh, that's how this works here. And what I did, and they did this on the newer machines, or, or, or the larger ones, is I put a knob on here. The more you screw that in, the more it limits the pump action. So I got a knurled knob on here instead of what they had, the locks, screw to set it. That looks good. I have it so I can crank this thing all the way open. And it really pumps. So when I first use the machine, or to start the machine up, I leave that so the pump is pumping full, you know. And then when I notice oil gushing out of everywhere, I start turning it down. 
I'm like this guy I worked with named Bill. He oiled everything. I mean, he just poured oil. He squirted oil he, on the ways. He oiled everything. Everything was oily. But I tell you what, uh, it, the machines work real good when they're oiled up, and I don't, I, I don't think it hurts anything. So I'm pulling the bill on this full oiler. Oiler bill. That's what they called him. Yeah, he'd have the chain oiler, his son, his old pan head, Harley, turned up full. And if you, ro if you rode behind him, you got oil on you. Plus it burned oil too, I think. Okay, that was Oiler Bill. And he oiled these things. So, okay, so, if you want to, if you got this kind of adjustment, I think this is a neat thing to do. Okay, if you want to save oil, maybe it's not. <laughs> okay. So, that's my advice as far as the axles and <laughs> goes. Now, these other, these other machines, uh, let me see if I got a light here. I don't know if I do. I guess I don't. It disappeared somewhere. But this one here has uh, uh, an oil window. I'll, to, I'll click it on here. Probably can't see in there. I don't know. But it'll drift. You'll see it drift in there. But this machine sat for years and years and years and it was outside for a few years. And it was extremely noisy. And uh, now I think you can actually hear me. So one of the good things to do is run the machines. Be sure to run them. Be sure to run them. Okay. That's my oil in tip for today. And I'll be back with some other cool things. Bye. Well, look who just woke up. Well, are you ready to go out? And her day begins. She's in a sheepskin here, a gift from my wife. And uh, she has a hard time getting out of it. What you think? You want to go out, little girl? Not really. I want to stay in my sheepskin. Okay. Hope you all have a good day. I'll get her out eventually.